All right, so let's take a look at how we can um, figure out what the nth term is in the following patterns. So this question is a little bit different in that they're not just asking what would be the next term. Um, for example, what would be the next term that comes after 15 in this um, sequence, but you're trying to predict what the nth term is. So that's an arbitrary term. So what we need to do is we need to figure out an expression that generates basically the numbers that you see there for a given term in the sequence. So if we look at question A, we can set it up um, a little bit like this here. So let's just start by writing out our values here. So the first term here is a 3, 7, 11, and then 15. So <clears throat> underneath each um, value there, we want to specify the term. So that term is specified by the number n. So when n is equal to 1, um, we have a function that will put in, take the number 1 and essentially spit out the value of 3. Okay, and then when the second term in the sequence shows up, that's n is equal to 2, that function will spit out the number 7. When the sequence is, uh, goes to item number 3, we get 11. And then when n is equal to 4, we get 15. Okay, so what we want to do is look at a way that we can think about how, how might we go about generating that expression because it's not entirely obvious right now, like how do I go from the number 1 to the number 3 or from the number 2 to the number 7. Okay, so let's, um, one way to look at this is let's just start by thinking, can we multiply a number, um, the term number, by some value and generate for example, the number 3. So we could take the number 1 and multiply it by 3, and that would give us the number 3. But then if we took the number 2 um, and we multiplied it by 3, that doesn't quite work right away. We, don't, we, we, get, we would get the number 6 instead of the number we really want here is 7. Okay, and then likewise we have the number 3, and what would we, if we multiply that by 2, we would get 6, which is quite a bit ways away from, from uh, 11. So doubling a number um, doesn't seem to work. Um, what else we could try? Well, we could try tripling the number. So we could go 1 times 3, which would give us 3, 2 times 3, which would give us 6, and, but that's still short. Um, 3 times 3, which is 9, which is closer, but we're still short by 2. And then um, 4 times 15, which is, or sorry, 3 times 4, which is 12, but then we're short, still short 3. But that almost doesn't seem to be too bad. So let's, why don't we try that? So when <clears throat> n is equal to 1, let's say that we multiply that number by 3. Okay, so that means 3 times n will, will give us the value of 3. So then we'd have to do the same thing for here. So this is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So this would be 3n. But now 6 is 1 short of 7. So we could just um, add 1 to this term here and make that equal to a 7. All right, so then let's just keep going. Let's do 3 times 3 which is a 9, but we're still short from 11, so the way we could get around that is we could just add 2. And then we are now 4 times 3, so that's 3n here, 3 times 4, which is 12. And 12 is short from 15, well that's by 3, so <clears throat> we could just add a 3 there. So we kind of see a pattern that we're, we have set up here. And if we really think about it, instead of 3, 3n by itself just could be 3n plus 0. Okay, so we multiply by 3, and where it looks like we're adding a number each time to it, and that number is increasing by 1. Now, the problem with this is that's not a general expression that we can use, because <clears throat> even though that will help us predict the next term, it's not a... Um, it's not an expression that where we can just say here's the number for n and then um, it works every time because this number here at the end keeps increasing so we can't find the general case in this point like the hundredth term 
here is going to be some number that we're going to have to add to and and there's no we can't necessarily find that so what we have to do is keep looking here so we have some expressions to start with and so what we have to ask ourselves is well how could we take this this leftover number here Okay, and write it in terms of the, um, the nth term value. Okay, so what I mean by that is <clears throat> this number here is zero, but the, the term we're talking about is n equals one. So how do we get a zero out of a one? Okay, so a way to think about that is, well, I could take the number one and then I could subtract one from it. Okay, so that means that that nth term, when n is equal to one, I could subtract one and get a zero. So what I could have with my expression then would be this, 3n plus n minus one. Okay, because n in this case is the number one, and one minus one will give us zero. So this is kind of working in the general case. So let's go to the second one here. So I need to make a number one when n is equal to two. Okay, so does this pattern kind of hold up? Well, let's just write it down and try it here. So this is 3n and then it's n minus one. So when n is two, two minus one is one. So this gives us an, a pattern here that looks like we can work with. Um, and then the same thing here, we'll just fill this in, n minus one and 3n plus n minus one. Okay, so in every case here, I don't have a number that's different now. I'm, I can write every value here in terms of the, the sequence um, value or the sequence placeholder that it is. So let's just collect like terms there. Let's do a little bit of math. So 3n plus n is 4n minus 1. And this is going to be 3n plus n is 4n minus 1, 4n minus 1, 4n minus 1. So if we look at question A, <clears throat> the nth term okay, is given by the expression 4n minus 1. So it doesn't matter what the value of n is now. If n is 50, we know that that 50th term would be 4 times 50, which is 200 minus 1, which would be 199. Okay, so that gives us the general case for each of these. So if we, we could do is let's, let's look at question B here. So B has a uh, set of values where we have 0, 2, 6, and 12. So let's just set it up the same way here. 0, 2, 6, and 12. Okay, and then n is equal to our term number. So the, when n is equal to 1, that's the first term, our value corresponds to 0. Then when n is equal to 2, we're supposed to have a 2. And when n is 3, we're supposed to have a 6. And when n is 4, we're supposed to have a 12. <clears throat> okay, so then we want to ask ourselves, because we need something to get going here, um, what number can I multiply by 1 when n is equal to 1 to give us a 0? Okay, well the only obvious number that would work there is 1 times 0. Okay, so when n is 1, okay, that's going to give us a 0. When n is 2, how do I get the number 2? Well, the only thing that would work there is 2 times 1. Okay, and then when n is 3, how do I get a 6? Well, that's going to give us 3 times 2. And when, I, and when um, n is 4, how do I get a 12? Well, that's going to give us 4 times 3. Okay, so in this case, this one's actually working out a little bit neater because we don't have to add a number to it. It looks like we can just multiply by a value here um, given our, our nth term. So the question here is just like the other problem above, is like when I have a zero and a one and a two and a three, okay, those are different than the, than the values of n. So how could I generate a zero um, when n is equal to 1. Okay, well, we can do kind of the same trick what we did above. A 0 is just going to be 1 minus 1. Okay, so if we write the sort of the general case out here, um, when n is equal to 1, that's going to be our first value, n. To get a 0, we're just going to take that number, n, and we're going to subtract 1 from it. 
Okay, in se second case here, when n is equal to 2, so that's what the 2 is, that's going to become an n, I need to generate a 1, so a 1 can be simply 2 minus 1, or in this case, n minus 1. And this pattern holds for all, whoops, this pattern holds for all um, terms. So if we expand this term out, we will see we have n times n, which is n squared, minus n, or n squared minus n, n squared minus n, n squared minus n. So the, the expression that generates the value for each term in the sequence is given by this, this function n squared minus n. So the expression to generate values for the nth term is n squared minus n for this sequence in this case. Okay, so if you see these two examples, how they're set up like that, um, why don't you go ahead and try the third one, which is 1, 6, 15, and 28, and try to work it out the same way. So start by writing down your numbers. Okay, so that will be 1, 6, 15, and 28. Set your term values up. So this is going to be n is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, and then just go through <clears throat> and ask yourself, um, what do I have to multiply or add in order to start with the number 1 and end up with a value of 1? How do I go from a 2 to a 6, a 3 to a 5, a 4 to a 28? Okay, and start by working out, writing out those patterns, and then substitute the numbers in those patterns in terms of n, okay, so that you can work out the general case for the formula, and then you see what you come up with um, <clears throat> for this one, okay?